winners. Let the pros show you how to make money. General Manager Al DeMarco, a regular contributor on Fox Sports, MSNBC, and Comcast Sports TV, brings over 25 years of handicapping experience to the table. CEO Steve Budin, the author of Bets, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, is the man responsible for creating the online betting industry. Together, they lead PickNation.com, your number one source for winners. Three weeks ago, the favorites went nine and four against the spread, eight road chalks that weekend going seven and one straight up and against the spread with an average winning margin of 26 points a game. Well, those were the days, right? Because two weeks ago, the underdogs went eight and five in Vegas. Last week, it was even worse. The puppies barked to the tune of 10 out of 13 games. And double digit dogs, seven and two against the spread the past two weekends, with two of them winning outright. Remember two Sundays ago, Carolina getting 10 or so at Arizona outright as Kurt Warner threw five interceptions? And how about Tampa Bay, winless last week, knocking off Green Bay as a double digit dog at home? against the Packers. Hi everyone, I'm Al DeMarco. Along with me, Steve Budin. Every single Sunday throughout this football season, we'll be joining you with our pregame show as we break down key games in the NFL from a gambling perspective. And today, we've got four big games. We're gonna be isolating Arizona, Seattle, Dallas and Green Bay. and the Cowboys keep their red hot roll going? How about Atlanta and Carolina? And then, of course, the granddaddy of them all, the big one, Indianapolis and New England. And, of course, later in the show, we'll be talking about some key betting strategies, whether parlays or teasers or wise investments, whether it's good or bad, and when you should be buying up or down half points. So that's some of the things we'll be taking a look at, not only from a handicapping perspective, but, of course, as you know, Steve, former former bookmaker, the creator of the offshore sports book industry. So you always take things uh, from the other side of the fence, as I like to say. That's right. So uh, with the underdogs, of course, going 18 and 8 against the spread the past two weeks, they now hold a slim one game lead over the favorites at 65, 64 year to date. Road teams, by the way, nine and four against the spread last week. They're now 13 games over 500 versus the odds makers this season. But finally, the one trend that remains money in the bank continues to be the straight up winners. They went nine and four against the spread last week. 106 wins versus 23 losses in Vegas this year. And again, Steve, as we always say, if there was this magic formula this year, if you could just pick the straight-up winner in advance, you have made an absolute bloody fortune betting them. And what we're obviously finding out is not so easy to pick just the outright winner of a game. Forget the spread. I mean, didn't Tampa Bay prove that last week? This is a team that couldn't win any place. The Rams a couple of weeks ago, Detroit earlier this season. It is not that easy, but it has been a phenomenal phenomenal play. I mean, that is just almost an 88% clip so far this year, if you were good enough to pick those straight-up winners. Hindsight's always 20-20. Oh, isn't it? Especially in this business. Don't I know it. Uh, Arizona-Seattle is going to be the first contest we're going to break down. Uh, listen, guys, Arizona, you know, I said last week, Kurt Warner, five interception game two weeks ago at home against Carolina. He would bounce back, and he certainly did. Big win at Chicago. Uh, taking on uh, Seattle here at home. Steve, how do you see this game? Well, you know, these teams met four weeks ago. Arizona crushed them 27-3, to held them to only 14 yards rushing. And other than the home field advantage now switching towards Arizona, you got to ask yourself, what's really going to be different in this game? Kurt Warner, who won Player of the Week honors, is coming off a huge win on the road in Chicago, now returns home to play a defense. He can dominate and did dominate just just four weeks ago. You take a look at the Seahawks and you gotta ask, the hell have they been doing since getting hammered by Arizona? They had a bye week, plenty of time to rest, get it together and regroup just in time to get tattooed by the Dallas Cowboys. They did go on and beat Detroit, but I think me, you, and the camera guy, we can beat Detroit also. So you got to take the Arizona Cardinals here, lay the wood, and take Kurt Warner in his form. Well, and certainly Carolina has struggled here at home. Um, I'm surprised, and I think you are as well, that Arizona isn't a bigger favorite in this game. Yeah, it must be a bookmaker's trap, but I'm going to fall into it again and lay the wood anyway. 
Okay, I can certainly see why. I mean, listen, last week, Arizona went to Chicago. You know, the final score said 41-21, but in reality, I think Arizona scored on their first six possessions of that game. They were up 31-7 to at halftime, 438 total yards in that game, guys, and 188 yards rushing. And that's a season high for an Arizona team that doesn't have the greatest of ground games. And Kurt Warner, well, you know, he was Kurt Warner. I mean, 32 for 41, 276 yards, two touchdown passes. Larry Fitzgerald though. Uh, season high, 13 catches. We probably all saw the replay. They showed it on every highlight show. He had that one tremendous sideline catch where literally fingertips on the field just pulling in that ball. You watch him before the game. He lays on the ground and has a trainer just throw balls at him. He turns right and left and he just keeps catching him and catching him two inches off the ground. Man is unbelievable. The thing that worries me, Arizona runs hot and cold. You know, last week he threw the five touchdowns. Two weeks ago, five interceptions. You know, this Seattle team just doesn't show up on the road. Though. I'd be very surprised if you know if Kurt Warner doesn't get it going this game. And the other thing is that I think that Fitzgerald and whoever's out there for Arizona, you know, Seattle has a very small, undersized secondary, and that's why Warner and uh, Arizona had a big first game against them, 27-3. And listen, Seattle has three wins against teams that are 6-17 and 17 straight up this season. Arizona's covered five of the last six in the series. And, you know, you look last week, Seattle, yes, they won and miraculously covered against Detroit. But that was a game that they were down 17-0 against the Lions. And if it wasn't for Matt Stafford throwing an interception that was a pick six in the final minute of play, they don't cover that game and a double-digit spread. They're 0-3 straight up and against the spread on the road this year for a reason. They lost by 13 at San Fran, 17 at Indy, 21 at Dallas. I think they lose by double digits here. It could be a trap, but I think you have to go with Arizona. And this is another great one. Last win on the road for Seattle versus a playoff team. December of 2004. And the other thing I don't know if a lot of people are aware of, you know, Matt Hasselback hurt his throwing shoulder on the very first play of last week's game against Detroit. Good point. And it took him nearly the first quarter to get that shoulder warmed up. He was throwing sidearm most of that game. Now, he is going to play today and start, obviously, but you've got to wonder how healthy he's going to be. And you've got to believe that he's going to be a marked man in this game, and they're going to come out all out with the, the blitz at, after him. So all the more I think you go ride Arizona in this game big time. Um, next game, this is another really interesting line. Dallas and Green Bay. I mean, this is a Cowboys team that, uh, well, they screwed me last week. That's all I've got to say about it. I think they screwed you, too. Uh, Dallas winning four in a row uh, on the field, three in a row against the oddsmakers, 20-16 to 16 upset at Philadelphia last week as a three, three-and-a-half-point road dog. You know, they have not suffered letdowns after playing Philadelphia, their big NFC East rival, because they have covered 13 of their last 17 games after playing Philadelphia. And Tony Romo, much maligned, for his failures in December and January, but he is Mr. November because he has won 13 consecutive straight-up starts in this month. Matter of fact, the Cowboys have won and covered each of the past two years by 10-point margins in this series against the Packers. And one more you can say about Green Bay. They are up 28-17 to in the fourth quarter at Tampa Bay, a team that had not won in forever, starting a rookie quarterback and you lose 38-28. to 28. And why do you lose? Because you can't protect your quarterback. Aaron Rodgers last week was sacked six more times by Tampa Bay. He was hit 12 times in this game. This team, Green Bay, has given up 37 sacks, and their offensive line is like rotating doors. I mean, it, it is just a joke. I say you go with the Cowboys here. You buy down the half point. It may be a trap, but... You know, up until last week's game, I was 5-0 and going on against the Cowboys this week, uh, this year. Okay, I learned my lesson. I'm 5-1. and I'm back with the boys this week. <laughs> You know, uh, the thing about it is obviously Green Bay hasn't emotionally recovered from the Brett Favre show when it left town. So, I mean, now they lose to Tampa Bay, and it's got people in Green Bay already talking regime change. But even if you throw out the loss to Tampa Bay and chalk it up to hurt feelings and wishing Brett Favre was still playing for them, who else have the Packers beat? Nobody. I mean, they put up huge points this season, but only against teams like St. Louis, Detroit, and Cleveland. But this Cowboy team is about to hit its peak, and now that Romo has finally got himself a go-to guy in Miles Austin, he's settled down, he's gotten his swagger back. I said it on the show last week. I think these Cowboys are contenders again. I think you got to back the boys and lay the number. Okay, we're in agreement with that game. We're going to be back here in just a moment 
after a short break and talk about our betting strategies. And remember, later in the show, two more big games, including Patriots and Colts, we'll be talking about. <laughs> 